was talking to him. And so there is also something else in that, that we have to come to a point of understanding, like Samuel, that God is actually talking to us. And he won't go away. And just because we hide, we can't hide from God, just like Adam found in the garden, we cannot hide from God. We have to accept that when God is speaking to us, we may not like it, it may make us feel uncomfortable, it may actually make us feel awful for other people even, but we have got to deal with it before God. But it's down to each person to come to that point with God in their own understanding and their own conscience and their own deliberation of what we read in the Bible, how, how literally we read it, looking at it in the cultural context, looking at it in the geographical context, in the historical context. There are so many things we have, to, we have to read into and understand about scriptures, but at the same time, there are some literal stuff that God gives us that is kind of for all time, not just for now and again. But there are also things in the scriptures that came through a cultural understanding of what was going on, and it's a different culture in that we live today. So it's important to hold these things in tension and not to get so totally stewed up with everything that we, we lose sight of what's really uh, important, and that is that God loves us. God wants the best for us, and God wants to wash us clean, and God wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants us, he wants us to be reconciled to him, and he wants us to walk with him, like he walked with Adam in the garden until Adam sinned. It was the same, it's the same story for us today. He wants us to be like Samuel, and say, yes, Lord. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And now, now I'm tuned into your voice, Lord. Now I, can, now I know it's not Eli calling me. Now I know it's not the minister talking to me. Now, hang on a minute. No, oh, no, I can hear God speaking. That's a bit different from someone having an axe to grind or being on a soapbox and trying to give you uh, a particular um, agenda that a minister might have. That's why it's always important to have your own Bibles with you and have your Bible in front of you and read things for yourself. It's really, really important. You then go away and, and bring that to God. Yes. To bring it to God. And you have now, there may be things that, that will come up today that you may have struggled with already and you've already settled it in your mind and everything's fine. <clears throat> We are told to be careful that when we stand, that we don't fall. Yes. So we have to be careful that there isn't an arrogance that creeps in and we're not prepared to listen to what God's saying to us afresh because his word is fresh every morning. His word is fresh to us all the time. And there are layers of his word which we really need to understand that God will speak to us at one point and we may not be strong enough to deal with something at that particular time, so we only get it on a kind of one level. But then as we grow in faith, as we grow in understanding, and as we, <clears throat> as we come to the point where we really want to follow God, and, and get, and instead of just having the spiritual milk of the gospel that we actually want to get into the whole food, because we're growing up, we've come out from being children in the faith, we've, we've become young men in the faith, or young women in the faith, or we might even have come to the point <clears throat> where we get to the point where we are fathers and mothers in the faith. And so we get to that point where, <clears throat> where we've grown up now, and we want whole food. We're not just interested in just hearing the gospel. Of course, we, we're happy to hear it, but we need to go more deeper. And it's all about our walk with God in going deeper and deeper and deeper. And God gives us layers of understanding. And this is where we have the wisdom coming through in applying his word. You know, there may be some things that we took on board when we first became Christians that we've come to realize they were, they were kind of, they were kind of, like the milk of the gospel, and, and these were the basics. But then we go on further, we realize that there are things that, that maybe, you know, instead of just taking a literal word that comes off the page, that we really need to be studying and understanding and trying to find out through prayer what God's, what God's yes. desire to get through to us was, and it may have been something else on a deeper level. And so it's really important that we're aware of that. So that's really what I, I want to leave Samuel today. It's quite a long thing in Samuel, but I think it's really important because it sets the scene for the other 
the other readings we've got, and I hope it's not going to be too long today, but we're on to Psalm 139 now, David's Psalm. And again, we're straight in straight away. Here the psalmist David points out that God sees in the darkness. Ooh, that's interesting. So from the sense that you know, Eli, were, his, his, his sons were, were hiding from, from God, really. In fact, quite blatantly and openly, thinking that God wasn't seeing what they were doing, I suppose. And, and yet God did know. And Eli condoned what they did because he didn't come against it. That's it. That was his sin. That was his problem. Because it was his sons. He made exceptions and he let them carry on. And he knew it was wrong, obviously, but that's what happened. And there, in this psalm in 139, verses 1 to 5 and 12 to 17, here we see that David says, God sees in the darkness. God actually sees in the darkness. So, you know, we can't, we can't hide from God. There's no point in us trying to, um, to do what Adam did and, and try and hide, you know. It doesn't work. Um, just listen to this psalm. He says, you have searched me and known me. Okay, sounds interesting. You know my sitting down and my rising up. As much as that. You understand my thoughts are far off. So even though when I'm really contemplating and thinking about stuff, when I'm, you know, quite deep in thought. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Oh my goodness. That's quite transparent, isn't it? We have to be a bit careful here. This is what David is saying. And he's saying this to God. He says, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. So even <clears throat> before the words are actually out of my mouth, they're on my tongue, I'm just about to say something, God knows what we're going to say before we say it. Yes. Wow. And then he says, you have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. So there's a protection gone in behind me and there's also a protection gone in, you know, he, he, he gives a containment to us and which can be very reassuring and quite secure. And having God's hand laid upon me as David, that's a wonderful thing, to have God's hand laid upon me. I mean, that is not in a, in a punishment thing there, that is his hand laid upon him. And so he was saying that he was anointed, that he had, <clears throat> in effect, what we would see today, um, although they, they hadn't had the the baptism of the Holy Spirit then, but God's hand was upon him. He was, he was actually anointed, in other words, he was chosen by God, and he was, God was looking after him, and God was protecting him. And today, of course, when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost come upon us, um, we know that God has accepted us and is going to call us to, to greater things and, and to, to serve him. So then in verse 12, it moves on. It says, indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the night shines as the day. It's almost like God's looking through him for red glasses, like they're doing those sights, you know, they can see, he can see. We're all in the dark, you know, we're all sat in the dark, and yet God can see everything and knows us completely. It says, for you formed my inward parts. This is how God, this is how deep God knows us. You formed... Well, it says the darkness and the light are both alike to you. So it's just the same. It's no different to God. It doesn't need a, it doesn't need a torch. Uh, but he says, for you form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. That's, that's a, a very sobering thought, to know that God knows us that intimate, even knew us before we were born. In our mother's womb. Wow. And so he said, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> you might think that's a bit arrogant, <laughs> but it's true. And each one of us here ought to be able to say, you know what? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Just turn to your neighbour and say, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> you're fearfully and wonderfully made today. Because God made you. God created you. God breathed life into you. That's what the scriptures tell us. And so, so David rejoices in that, that he's fearfully and wonderfully made. To know that he could go up against Goliath, that he could become the king of Israel. And all he was, all he was was this little shepherd man, little shepherd boy. Yeah. 